Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live stream. My name is Faiza, um, and I'm joining you from the London School of English. We're very excited uh, to welcome you to today's session, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're excited to have one of our expert trainers with us here today, John Dyson, and he will be taking us through the topic of advanced English, 25 expressions for your everyday English. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, let us know in the comments section which country and city you're joining us from. Uh, you can share that information on the chat next to the video. We will be um, answering questions at the end of today's session, so feel free to ask us throughout the live stream. We will um, also have a quiz, so it's a little bit interactive and there are moments where you can share your answers um, during the session. If uh, this is your first time here, we'll just uh, give you a little information about the London School of English. We offer English language courses um, that are delivered both at our center here in Holland Park in the bottom left corner over there, as well as uh, training online. We have uh, virtual groups and online training uh, for individuals as well. So you can find more information on our website here, www.londonschool.com. If you have any questions or would like to contact us um, after the live stream, you can do so at our email address at clients at londonschool.com. So I will take us back to the main session and leave you in um, John's very capable hands. I can see here that we have some of our, our usual um, live stream participants. Lovely to see you, Frank. I hope you're doing well. Uh, joining us from Luxembourg. Ali as well, greetings from Somalia. Great to see you. We also have Carolina here, um, who's joining us from Kijon. Um, and then we have Srinil here from India. So very, a lot of uh, international um, viewers with us here today. So over to you, John. Thanks, Pfizer. Okay, well, uh, hello everybody and welcome to another live stream from the London School of English. My name is John Dyson. I'm one of the trainers here. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us on today's live stream. It's really nice to see people from Portugal and Luxembourg and India and Spain and Somalia. Truly is a global uh, live stream this evening. Today's topic is advanced English, 25 expressions for your everyday English. We're going to be looking at a series of words and expressions which hopefully will help you to be more effective in your English conversations. Firstly, there's one point I'd like to make, which is um, it's an important point. Advanced English doesn't mean that you're using very long and complicated words. It, it's more your ability to use the kinds of expressions which are perhaps more versatile and adaptable than the average expressions. And in fact, I have cheated a little bit uh, when it's when I say it's 25 expressions, because it's actually a few more than that. So you get some little bonus expressions in between. So let's kick off with number one. And we'll do it by numbers. Number one is the expression, what's up? Now, everybody knows this from the Budweiser, Budweiser advert, I imagine. What's up? OK, now it has more than one meaning, though. And it can mean, how's life or how are you? But it can also mean, what's wrong? What's the problem? And another meaning it can have is, what's happening? So very short, very simple, but it's a good expression to use for three different contexts. How are you? What's the problem? And what's going on at the moment? Right, let's move on quickly to number two. Number two is the expression, do you fancy, plus the ing, the gerund form of the verb. So, do you fancy going for a drink? Do you fancy eating out tonight? Do you fancy grabbing a bite to eat? Which is a nice way of saying having a meal or having a snack of some kind. So that's a useful expression in the sense that you can use that. It means, do you want to? Um, are you interested in doing something? So it's just an alternative to using the same old expressions that we all use a lot. So do you fancy going for a drink? Okay, do you fancy watching a, um, a live stream? You do, because you're here watching it. 
It's a very quick and efficient way of inviting someone to do something pleasurable. Okay, let's move on to number three. Number three is an expression uh, where we can say it at the beginning uh, of any sentence that we want to finish a conversation with. We use it for bringing a conversation subject to a conclusion. So if we begin the sentence with, at the end of the day, what it means is, I am about to say the last thing I want to say on this particular subject. So at the end of the day, or another expression we use is, when all is said and done, when all said and done, only you can decide on the best option. We all have to pull our weight in this team. So it's a kind of nice way of bringing your contribution to a conversation to a close. And that expression at the end of the day is a kind of summarization of what you've said previously in the conversation. Okay, moving on rapidly, let's go to number four. Number four is an expression, it's three expressions in one really. It's, it's the idea is expressing willingness and openness to a suggestion. So, you know, if you say, where, where should we go out tonight? I don't mind, I'm easy. I'll go with the flow. Go with the flow is an expression we use connected to rivers, rivers flow. So it means you will go in the same direction that the river flows. That expression, I'll go with the flow, normally refers to a group of people. And just one point, be very careful with I don't mind because it's not the same as saying I don't care. I don't care is quite a negative expression, meaning it is of no interest to me one way or the other. So I don't mind is a lot more friendly and open, open minded when you're discussing a series of options. OK, let's move on to uh, number five. Nice picture here. Off the top of my head. Now, this is um, I mean, the example we've got here is very, very topical for the moment. It says, when exactly will we be able to travel to Europe again? And you reply, well, off the top of my head. I think it's the end of July, but don't quote me on that. So off the top of my head means you are giving information which is not 100% verified. It's a more advanced way of saying, I think, or as far as I know. And it's usually in response to a question which requires very, very specific um, information in the answer. The other expression, don't quote me on that, what it means is I, I am warning you that my words are not undisputed fact and please don't say to any other person, John said that the restrictions will be lifted by the end of July because I may be wrong, maybe I'm not right. So don't quote me on that. To quote is to put in, in into inverted commas. It's what we do with politicians to quote a politician, for example, is to use the exact words that person said. Right, fast and furious, moving on to number six. Here's this expression. You may have heard this, but let's use it. it keep me in the loop. Keep me in the loop. The loop means the information circle, if you like. So in that case, you're asking to be included in the information circle. So, for example, we've got the, the little example of the, the conversation at the bottom. So we'll know more when John calls later on today. And you say, well, keep me in the loop. And the other person very nicely replies, of course, you'll be the first to find out. Yeah. So you want to be kept in the loop. You don't want to be outside the loop. If you're outside the loop, you're no one. So try to be try to be kept inside the loop. Right. Moving on to number seven. Now, this is uh, what I would call making a polite exit from a conversation. And it uses two words which often indicate that what you are about to say is either going to change the subject or is your warning, let's say, that you are about to depart or you no longer wish to continue that conversation. And normally we say it like this. Anyway, well, great talking to you. 
um, I should be going. So we've got three things over anyway. Well, which is an indication to the other person that we're changing in some way. Great or good or nice talking to you. Right, it's a very polite expression. I think it speaks for itself. And the last one, I should to I should be going, or I have to be going, or I have to go. And normally we might follow that with an excuse, like say I've got a doctor's appointment, or I have to go to a meeting, or whatever. Okay, the other person replies, "See you later on." No doubt. Yeah. So as you can see, it's nice talking to you, or good talking to you. Or it may be the first time you've met this person. You say, nice meeting you. So that's a good way of exiting a conversation with elegance, let's say. Moving on, let's look at number eight. This, this is a, an expression we use when we're expressing a negative opinion or emotion about either a situation or it could be a person. And the expression is, oh, he's a pain in the neck. This whole situation is a pain in the neck. And the picture says it all. So as a customer, and this is true for me, as a customer, the biggest pain in the neck with my broadband provider is calling the helpline. And I put in a couple of extra bonus expressions here. It drives me up the wall. It drives me round the bend. It makes me go crazy with anger normally. So it's a pain in the neck. And we can also use this expression simply by saying a pain. So these COVID restrictions are a real pain. So you don't necessarily have to say a pain in the neck. You could just say a pain. And we also use it as a kind of exclamation. Like say, oh, what a pain. Of course, you can say what a pain in the neck, but you can also use it without. So, yeah, that's just simply a way of expressing irritation, let's say, um, um, being sick and tired, being fed up with a situation. Oh, what a pain. Good. Right. So we're making a good progress here. Let's move on to number nine. And this expression is referring to asking for help. And the expression is uh, I could do with a hand. I could do with a hand, which means it would be really useful for me to have some help could do with a hand. So for example, I have 20 packing boxes in the back of the car, which actually when I look at that example, it must be a big car. Anyway, I have 20 packing boxes in the back of the car. Could you lend me a hand with unloading them? I could do with a hand. So you can see we've got two expressions that I could do with means it would be really useful for me to have. And the other one is, could you lend me a hand? So it's just another way of saying, could you help me? And we can use it with other constructions. For example, would you mind lending me a hand? And when we've got the expression I could do with, we can also use it uh, not only to talk about getting help, but for example, well, I could do with 26 hours in the day. I'm so busy. I could, I could do with some more free time. I could do with a bigger salary. Anyway, yes, that's another story. So that's... Um, that expression number nine, the appropriate response will be, oh, of course, no problem. Yeah, of course. OK, let's move on to number 10. And again, as you can see from the picture, we've got a picture there of somebody hanging off a rock. And this expression is when another person is telling you about a very different situation, a very difficult situation that they have. And you want to express a certain amount of sympathy and encouragement. So you'd say, hang on in there, in there, meaning in the situation and hang on, meaning don't let go. Just try to survive as long as you can. So the example we've got is I really don't know how to cope with this situation. And the sympathetic friend replies, well, hang on in there. It'll sort itself out one way or the other. OK, so it's simply giving somebody some encouragement when they may be going through a difficult situation or they've got a very challenging scenario they have to deal with. <clears throat> so there we are. We've reached uh, the first 10 expressions and now we're going to have a quiz. 
Yes, it's quiz time. So John, I thought I'd join you. Oh, um, okay. For the yeah. quiz. I, I won't give the answers. No. <laughs> well, only when only when you ask me to. <laughs> I'll ask but otherwise, you to. I won't. I'll ask you to when everyone else has had a chance. But let's yeah. let's have a look. So, the first one we've got. These are the um, so they're all connected to the first ten expressions. So A, could you lend me a mm with these bags? I'm looking at the chat on my screen to see if anybody can tell me the answer. See if you can get in there with the answer as quickly as you can. One word for the answer. One of the expressions we've seen in the previous 10 phrases and expressions any ideas any ideas i think while we're waiting to load them um yeah to... oh yes oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. yeah diana from portugal has got it right it's hand yeah could you lend me a hand well done diana and frank and um, yeah, okay. I think it's a question of how fast the um oh yep. everybody's getting it right now. Every, everyone's getting it right now. <laughs> okay, moving on to B. What's the population of England? Mm, off the top of my mm, I'd say 50 million. Right, what's the answer to that one? Off the top of my mm, I would say 50 million. But don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. <laughs> really i'm really yeah. really not sure but i think it's what, closer to is it more 65 than that? ah but this, this is only england oh That's, england yeah uh, true 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 i think the I uk think scotland, is, scotland is four million wales yeah. is about two million and northern ireland is one and a half million so yeah. i so reckon it must be yeah okay the answer is head well done ali diana frank Zed Zed Bakir. I'm not sure what your first name is. Tina, who is, um, I imagine, from uh, Greece, perhaps. Carolina from Gijon. Okay, let's move on to C. My manager, can we go C? Yeah, that's it. My manager goes on and on about how we should all be prepared to do unpaid overtime for the good of the company. It's a real pain in the. Mm. What's the missing word? What's the missing word? it really is a, yeah. a, yes you're absolutely right db it is a pain in the neck it's a pain in the neck yeah it's a, a, a little expression for protesting as well you can see okay let's move on to d well done everyone who put neck well done through nil d we've got this situation is terrible i can't tolerate it and the other person your friend replies mm, on in there john It'll be over by tomorrow. So, yeah, that's, hi, hello, neck. Yes, Tina, hello, welcome from Greece. Welcome, nice to have you with us. Okay, and the answer is hang, hang on in there. Yeah, hang on in there, John, it'll be over. Thank you, everyone who's got that right. You're all doing really well on this. And finally, E, do you mm, go into the theatre this coming weekend? I'd love to. Okay, so what's the missing word in that conversation? Do you mm, go to the theatre this coming weekend? I'd love to. What a good idea. Yeah, that sounds like a great... Well, <laughs> in fact, it's a nice invitation. Whether it's possible to go to the theatre at the moment is debatable. I would say, what do you think, Pfizer? I don't think you can. I, I I th you can. Um, oh, you, you can, can hear it. You can hear in London. I know a few people who've been, uh -huh. um, and and some actually said it's quite an enjoyable experience because there aren't very many people, so it's almost like a private viewing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a phrase you can use. Yes, yep. well done, Srinil. Fancy, well done, Tina. Well done, Diana. Frank, Carolee. Oh, you're all just very clever this evening. That's really good. Okay, so that's five. That's a, a mini quiz for you there and we'll move on with the main list again we've got to number 11 number 11 so this is the um this is the beginning of part two this expression is up in the air it's up in the air and that's expressing uncertainty I put down at the bottom nobody has a clue what's going on everything seems to be up in the air right now so up in the air means uncertain. Nobody knows what it is. And notice the other expression, nobody has a clue. I, I haven't a clue, we say, I haven't a clue. I have no idea, I haven't a clue what's going on. 
everything's up in the air right now. In fact, you may have seen a film with George Clooney called Up in the Air. It's a very good film. I'd recommend it to you. So um, that's actually literal. It's about a man who goes around. Anyway, I won't get into details, but it's all up in the air. My future is up in the air. Everybody's future is up in the air. The future of the entertainment industry is up in the air. Okay, so let's move on to number 12. Number 12, we have the expression, don't beat about the bush, get to the point. So an example, and then we'll, we'll, we'll explain it a little bit. So one person says, um, we had um, a few problems during the negotiations. Um, the British didn't really seem to be interested in trying to reach some sort of, don't beat about the bush, get to the point. Right, sir, the British said no. So when we say don't beat about the bush, then it means don't be non-specific. Don't be non-specific and don't go around the edges of what you want to say, say it directly, get to the point. Yeah. So we can use that when we're telling another person not to waste a lot of words without saying very much. But we can also use it when we want to warn the people who are listening to us that we're going to say something very direct that they may not necessarily like. As in this example, which is um, I won't beat about the bush. We're in big trouble. So another way of saying that would be I'll get straight to the point. We're going to go bust. So, yeah, uh, those two expressions, I'll get, get to the point, I'll get straight to the point, don't beat about the bush. Um, those are all useful expressions as well when we're in meeting scenarios, for example, when somebody is going on and on and on, and you would like them to get to the point as soon as possible. Okay, let's move on to number 13. Now, number 13 is, th this is actually a picture of a baseball game and it's connected to baseball in a sense the expression is to touch base let's touch base soon and what it means to touch base is to establish or re-establish contact with a friend or a colleague and uh, in the example that we've got in the little dialogue it says it seems like ages since we've had a chance for a really good chat yeah, but at least we can touch base via Zoom, right? Yeah, but it's not like having a pint together in the pub, having a drink together in the pub or meeting for a coffee or whatever. So to touch base, it usually means just to check in. It's, it's another expression we use is to check in. So it means to establish contact, not necessarily for a long time. It might be very brief, but it's just to keep that contact going let's let's touch base when we can and it comes from baseball because as you can see in baseball there are four bases and to touch base means to be on safe ground so you need to touch base in baseball and we need to touch base with for example family that's a very good example you can um your mother might or your father might always be complaining that you never ring up you used to why well, i ring up to touch base every week Yes, but that's only a five minute phone call. Yes, but I'm touching base just to let you know I'm OK. Anyway, that's uh, the expression to touch base. Let's move on to number 14. Number 14 is an expression down to earth. They are really down to earth. And the example we've got is what are people from the north of your country like? Well, compared with those from the south, they're really down to earth. Very straightforward not snobbish, not class conscious. And then we have this expression, they call a spade, a spade. Now that last expression, you may think that's a little bit confusing. A spade is something that you use to dig earth out of the ground. And when you say somebody calls a spade a spade, it means they speak very directly, very directly, even if it might cause a little bit of offense. but. The expression down to earth is, you know, I like down to earth people, people who are not posh and have airs and graces and think they are better than they really are. 
So, um, yeah, it's a good way of describing. And in fact, it is true. It's what people often say if people of the north of England are a little more down to earth than the sophisticated people from London and the south. Of course, if you ask people from the south, they would say that's nonsense. But I'm from the north, so I would say that. So, yeah, um, I like to call a spade a spade. I like to say things as they are, even if some people find it a little uncomfortable. Right, let's move on to expression uh, number 15. This one is very straightforward. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. English pronunciation is pretty tricky to master, but the grammar's a piece of cake. So that means it's really easy, really easy. No problem at all. Piece of cake. So let's take a look at another example. Hey, don't worry about the test tomorrow. I did the test this morning and it was a piece of cake. A hundred out of a hundred. Yeah, piece of cake, no problem. So it's a way of saying, if somebody says to you, how was the exam? Ha, piece of cake. It means it was really, really easy. Okay, number 16. Let's have a look at number 16, this expression. Now this is an alternative for saying, I don't know. So it's just quite a nice alternative. Your guess is as good as, as good as mine. Your guess is as good as mine. So the example we have is, so what do you reckon the government's going to do about this massive budget deficit? Your guess is as good as mine. All I know is I wouldn't like to be in their shoes. And as you can see, when we use this expression, um, there is another expression that we use, which has a very similar meaning, which we've already seen, in fact, which is, I haven't a clue. So, for example, if somebody says to you, what's the capital of North Macedonia? Personally, I would say, I haven't a clue. No idea. I haven't a clue. Now, I wonder if anybody in our chat can um, write in telling me what the capital of North Macedonia is without looking at Google Maps or without Googling it, just out of interest. So if anybody knows the capital of North Macedonia, feel free to let me know because you can always learn new things. Right, let's move on to number 17. Okay, this is an expression that we use to mean 100% certainty. And the expression in the infinitive is to be bound to. So let's have a look at the examples we've got at the bottom of the screen. Oh, thank you very much, DB. Stop. Skopje. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Skopje is the capital of North Macedonia. Thank you very much. A very prompt response. OK, so this expression to be bound to, let's take a look at the example. Your friend says you've studied every possible subject for this entrance exam. You're bound to pass. So, as you can see, you use it with an infinitive verb after it. You're, you're bound to pass. And I've used another example, which is very uh, topical, given that the football is on at the moment. This year, England are bound to win the European Football Championship. And then I put a third example, because actually I'm very bad at predicting things. So I am bound to be wrong about these predictions, because I always am. So it's bound to happen it means it's absolutely certain to happen. So it's an old, it, it's a kind of expression you can use where instead of saying, I am 100% certain it will happen. It's bound to happen. You're bound to pass the exam. England are bound to win the European Football Championship. Okay, moving on to number 18. Now, I've got this expression in here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... And this is a classic example where you are saying one thing, but you are actually thinking another. Correct me if I'm wrong is what you say, but what you're thinking is I'm right. I'm not wrong. And I know I'm right. So I put the example, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the capital of Romania Bucharest and not Budapest? Ah, OK. So and another expression we use is very similar is I may be wrong. But I thought the population of Scotland was higher than that of Wales, which it is. So it's just, I may be wrong, but, or correct me if I'm wrong, but is simply a rather more polite way of saying you're wrong. And I know the answer. That's not right. 
well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure the capital of Romania is Bucharest and not Budapest. Okay, I, I've got some really nice expressions down here from Saga and from Frank. I have no idea. I haven't a clue. <laughs> Asking about or telling me about their response to the capital of North Macedonia, I assume. Anyway, we have the capital. Skopje is, is what it is. And what we will do is move on to number 19 now. I think we're, um, we're getting close to the end here. We're making good progress, very rapid progress. Number 19, yes. This is an expression which looks pretty easy in many ways. <clears throat> what you can use it for is when you want to summarize your feeling about a subject in one sentence. Well, you know what they say. And then you would follow that with a particular idiomatic expression, very often idiomatic expression. Or in the example we have here, you know what they say. Nobody got anywhere, nobody ever got anywhere without hard work. So we have a few more um, idiomatic expressions. Let's see if we can put these in. You know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, that's one. Well, you know what they say, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Another one. Well, I know he's he's had a very difficult time of it, but you know what they say. If you play with fire, you're going to get burnt. And the last one. Well, you know, he, I know he's very unhappy, but there is one good thing that's come out of this. I mean, you know what they say. Every cloud has a silver lining. So all well, those expressions have come thick and fast. So remember that this is being recorded this live stream so you can at any point go to our youtube channel the london school of english youtube channel and watch it again so that you get full advantage of all these expressions okay so that's uh number 19 and what we're going to do now hello Pfizer again hello again <laughs> what we're going to do is uh for the last three or four of these expressions i'm going to give you uh another little quiz this is uh, a little easier than the last one because you will have multiple choice. Um, <clears throat> this first expression means when you ignore danger and you pretend that it doesn't exist. In other words, if you can't see the danger, it isn't there. And this expression is we should deal directly with this situation rather than just burying our heads in the... And then you have four options. Sand bucket ground or water so we should deal directly with this rather than burying our heads in the hmm. so if anybody thinks they know what the right word is to complete that idiomatic expression then put it in the chat does anybody know okay well Pfizer, what's the answer oh Sand. <laughs> sand, yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the answer is sand. That's good. So don't just okay. bury your head in the okay. Yeah, now we're getting the answers coming in. That's right, Diana, Tina, Frank. Well, well, all of you. Um, yeah, well done. Okay. Bury my yes, don't bury your head in the sand, Tina. No, it's, it's you... no, because <laughs> the danger is always there, you know. That's the trouble. Okay, let's try another one. Number 20. And that expression, John, it comes from ostriches, right? When they're oh, in danger. Yes, because yes. I think ostriches are the animal that originally, or the bird originally, that was associated with burying its head in the sand. Mm -hmm. which I think at of, any sign of, of danger, they just they stick just, their head in the sand because they're sort of like, if I if I don't see it, I guess that's another expression. Um, yeah. If you see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, it's sort of, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't exist if you haven't experienced exactly. it. Mm -hmm. If I can't see it, it isn't there. Yep. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's move on to number 21. This one is, you can try to persuade her, but you won't change her mind. After all, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it. And then the expressions you have are, the words you have are, wait, walk, drink, or eat. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it. 
Alan, well, let's see. I bet you're all all over the world in Portugal and Somalia and Greece and Luxembourg writing the answers down and it's winging its way through the. Ah, okay, good. Yes, they all arrived at once. From Diana and Ali and Danielle, Danielle, and from Segar and from Frank. Drink is the right word. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Which means you can give all the advice you want to someone, but you can't force them to listen to you and to take that advice or to act on that. Ah, oh, Tina's put, you can't lead a horse to water, but you can make it drink. Uh, well, that's kind of the other way around from the, the, the normal expression, but that's an interesting one. It depends. If the horse doesn't want to go to the water, then you'll have to give it a drink out of a bucket. But normally we say you can lead a horse to water. But you can't make it drink and I, I have to say this is one of those expressions that sometimes we don't even need to use the second half of the expression because a british native speaker or american native speaker they would automatically know the uh, the second part of the expression so i would say for example well you can lead a horse to water and the other person would know what i meant or well every cloud <laughs> And they would know what I meant. Has a silver lining. Yeah. So let's move on to number 22. This, this is uh, an expression which means that you have heard information, verifiable information, from the primary source of that information. So the sentence is, this is not just a rumor. I heard it from the horses. And then you've got four options stable the horse's stable the horse's mouth the horse's teeth or the horse's owner so which one do you think it is stable mouth teeth or owner i found with a lot of these expressions that you know they're related to animals or they're related to sports <laughs> yes oh. yeah 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 they are and also when you look at business idioms especially they're mm -hmm. often related to military action as well especially marketing expressions. Yep. Well, that's good. Everybody's absolutely on the ball today because we've got all of the answers say mouth. So well done to all of you for that. I heard it from the horse's mouth. I heard it from the horse's mouth, which is like saying this is the authoritative source of information. So I haven't heard this second hand or third hand. I've heard it from the person who knows straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Number 23. This one is to, um, this is an expression we use, meaning I'll give you a very, very brief and concise summary of an idea. So the example is I'm a bit reluctant. Reluctant means not very willing or not really wanting to. I'm a bit reluctant to tell her everything. So in other words, you don't want her to really want her to know. Um, so in a, the expression we use is in a, mm, you don't really want her to know. Is it in a small word, small word, in an eggshell, in a bird's nest, or in a nutshell? In a small word, in an eggshell, in a bird's nest, or in a nutshell? Yes, it is in a nutshell absolutely so for example if i say i think england have got the best midfield best attack best defense best goalkeeper best coach in a nutshell they've got the best team what i'm doing is summarizing and compressing all of that information into a very short statement so there you are in a nutshell and moving on to number 24 the penultimate expression. This is an expression we use to express urgency and importance, and also to indicate something that is the most important thing after you've considered everything else. Okay, so the example is really a kind of business type example. We must take immediate action. The bottom mm, is that if we don't do something, we will go bust. Okay, so in this case, uh, what's the answer? Is it the bottom line, the bottom statement, the bottom basis, or the bottom opinion? Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Well done. The bottom line, Tina, Sega, Zed. Don't know what to call you. Ali, Abdi. Yes. Oh, you're all doing well. You're all obviously advanced people, students here. You know, did very well. Okay. So the bottom line. And where does that expression, the bottom line, come from? Originally, that the bottom line is what you see on a financial statement. And it is the most important number because it is the number that expresses whether you've made a profit or you've made a loss. So the bottom line in a financial statement, any financial statement, is the most important information, which is why we say this is the bottom line. So the bottom line is if you don't study vocabulary, you'll never learn it. So there you are. You've got to learn your vocabulary by studying it or by using it. And the bottom line is practice makes perfect. Right. Well, we've whizzed through all of those. We've got one more example, and this is a tongue twister, as you can see on your screen. Now, if you all have microphones, I would ask you one by one to repeat this, but um, you don't. So I'm going to ask Pfizer to see if she can attend to this. This is oh. a, a very good way to practice pronunciation of very specific clusters of um, <clears throat> vowel sounds or consonant sounds. So in this case, we're focusing on the ch and the w. So let's see, Pfizer, if you okay. if you can do this without making a single mistake, I will be really impressed. Okay. Okay. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck he would as much as he could and chuck as much wood as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Really good. Really good. Outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> Have you been practicing all day? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's the first time you've seen it. I'm amazed. Yeah. You are very, very talented. That's good. And of course, there is there is another example. This is another good one to use. You can find these tongue twisters. If you Google tongue twisters, you will find lots of examples. The, the two we've looked at are very, very well known. Now, seeing as I asked Pfizer to do that one, I think it's only fair that I should do this one myself. <laughs> and I'll probably get it wrong now. So oh, here we go. She sells seashells on the seashore. The, sh <laughs> the shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Right. Oh. And Tina comments, it's like you're rapping. Yeah, it is a bit, <laughs> a bit like rapping probably not as good no. yes not really. i think we'll keep our our day jobs <laughs> yeah we'll keep our day jobs that's that's absolutely yeah we'll, we won't uh, don't ring us we'll call you okay so that's really good for for practicing pronunciation it's not an expression as such but it is a kind of fun challenge to yourself to see what your pronunciation is and how well you can pronounce those difficult sounds. And there are all kinds of tongue twisters to practice all kinds of um, different sound combinations. So I hope there's been a bit of something for everyone in that last half an hour. And remember that even if you're a, an advanced English speaker or learner, it doesn't mean you have to overcomplicate things. Sometimes the simplest expressions can be the best and the most useful. Okay, so I'll hand back to uh, to you, Faisal. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, John. That was a lot of fun, and I think lots of useful expressions. It was nice also to see um, people use those expressions when you ask the question about uh, North Macedonia and have some fun at the end. I think yeah. Sagar here mentions another tongue twister of Peter yeah. Piper picked a pot of is a pot of pickles. Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That's it. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what the rest is. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Woo! Oh. Very <laughs> I nice. Need drink, I need a drink of water now. <laughs> mm. um, but yes, thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to let us know and we'll answer them. Um, and just, I guess, to get us a little bit started um you know the, I, I would say you know this is one of those fun areas of of language learning kind of once you get to that point of feeling quite comfortable in your language then you can have some fun with using these um expressions uh, could you give us any examples of like what context somebody might use this in um when they're speaking um, english yeah i mean i think 
looking at uh, some of them are, are for fairly high frequency types of communication, like inviting people to do something or suggesting an idea. Um, you know, uh, uh, many of them are sort of relationship based things like hang on in there and, and you know, what's up. I think the, the way I chose these, because obviously you could choose hundreds and hundreds of useful expressions, but I was looking for examples of expressions which are um, hopefully useful in certain contexts. And what you need to do is identify what is my reason for speaking here? What am I trying to express? So an expression like bound to, I'm bound to do it, or you're bound to be successful. The, the, what you're doing there is expressing a, a, the concept of certainty for the future. So it's really trying to say, well, how can I say this um, in a different way? Because if you have an advanced level of English, you may well know quite a few expressions, but you could never stop learning. So I think, you know, that's the point where you say, OK, well, I've never used that before. I will try and integrate that into my active use of the language, whether it's spoken or written. Yep. We have a question here from Diana. Is it yeah. possible to add got to I haven't got a clue? Both are yes, correct. Is. is there a difference? Uh, that's a good question, Diana. Yeah, it is. It is possible. Is there a difference? Well, I suppose um, I haven't a clue might be more associated with American English. And when you put got, it tends to be British English, because when we use I've got, uh, I've got to go, for example, the mm -hmm. Americans tend to say I have to go. Um, so we tend to use the word, we add the word got when we're talking about this concept of possession or um, obligation, but only in the present form. We can't use it in the past and we can't use it in the future. So you can't say, will you have got time to do this? No, it's will you have time? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can only really use it in the present. But yeah, right, you can you can use it. Yeah. Great. Um Z Becker has a question. Can we use these in our formal writing pieces? It's a very good question. Well, I would be hesitant to mm. say yes, actually, because looking back at these expressions, uh, you know, there are a fair few idiomatic expressions in there. Um, I suppose these have been more designed or chosen for spoken English. Yep. rather than written formal English. That that has a kind of different set of rules. So I suppose my answer would be be very cautious about using any of these expressions in your formal writing pieces, whether that's yep. formal business English or formal academic English. Yes. Does it sound a little informal? Yeah. I think um, I'd also say that in a business context, it can sometimes depend on the channel. So, yeah. for example, if you're if we use teams here at work and you're on chat, you can sometimes write that to somebody because it's not an official formal log right. of communication, but I wouldn't really take any of that language over to my emails. No, um, no. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a very good I, question, actually, um, yeah, yeah, just yeah. To, to, to recognize that a lot of these expressions, they translate much better in the spoken. And I know, um, John, yeah. there were like a few examples you gave where even the body language you use when you're saying something can add emphasis or or give somebody a sense of like correct me if i'm wrong and you know the way you say it yeah. you're like well i'm right but uh, i'm telling exactly. you that, uh, yes it's I like, that, what i was thinking another expression that came to mind was with all due respect mm -hmm. which is another well some people yeah. say that passive aggressive i i, yeah. I don't know maybe it is <laughs> correct yeah. me if i'm wrong anyway i would still put it in there because it's yeah. just better than saying you're wrong and i'm right yeah. And I did find out the capital of North Macedonia, which is really useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we had a thank you. Um, uh, yeah. Sunshine Channel had a quick question. Where can I find the recorded link? It will be um, uploaded onto YouTube as soon as the live stream's over. So you can find it there. Um, and it's on the London School of English YouTube channel. Um, right. Yeah. So. The, oh, so. Sorry, go on. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was just going to say about, you know, very often people will say, well, how can you kind of remember these these expressions? Because mm. sometimes they're rather random. And I mean, what I often say to my learners is, well, think think of a, a, a key word in, within the expression and a key word that may be, not always, but hopefully it would trigger your memory to say, oh, okay, yes, now I remember. So an example would be the key word bound. 
bound. If you remember, the expression was you're bound to remember, you're bound to pass the exam. So that's one strategy for trying to remember that expression. If I use another word, neck, which expression am I referring to? It's a pain in the neck. If I say clue, I haven't a clue. I haven't got a clue. If I use the word loop, keep me in the loop. If I use the word hand, um, can you give me a hand? So, I mean, that may or may not work. There is no definitive answer, but that is one way of saying, okay, what, what's the word in each of these expressions? Or I want to try and use it. What word stands out for me and is, is, is kind of might help me to remember that. I think we were also talking about how, you know, in different languages, you might have similar expressions as well. Um, so we were just having a quick chat about, for example, the kill two birds with one stone. Um, and I asked a colleague of mine who's Italian, is there a similar expression? And she said, yes, but in Italian, it's two pigeons and you tempt them with a broad bean as in like a, a food. Um, so sometimes maybe that can also help to be like, oh, right, I know that expression in my native language and I know that there's an equivalent in English. Hmm. I mean, that. I suppose the key, when you're getting to advanced level English, the challenge is trying to use these expressions appropriately within the right context, and yep. the right register of formality. That's that's the, the challenge. But, you know, experiment with it. Be adventurous. I mean, we learn by making mistakes sometimes. Yep. And I think the first thing is memorize. It's, I'm not saying memorize like parrot learning. I, I just think you want something that will help you to that will trigger your memory to say, mm -hmm. oh, okay, yes, I remember it, to sand. But, oh, yeah, bury my head in the sand. We can't bury our heads in the sand. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much, um, John. I think we'll we'll wrap it up here. Um, as I said, we offer a variety of English language training, whether you're looking to join us here face-to-face -face in London. Our center is open, and we are welcoming students from around the world. Um, and we also have our online uh, group courses and individual courses um, in different topics from general English to business English to IELTS exam preparation, as well as specialized areas such as um, legal English um, and English for HR. You can find more information on our website here at www.londonschool.com. Otherwise, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact us after the event at clients at londonschool.com. We will be back here same time next week um, for another topic. And uh, so you can join us and subscribe to our channel to receive the notifications. Um, but what I think would be fitting is for us to finish this live stream with a beautiful comment from Sagar, which says, in a nutshell, you guys are fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. So it's, um, a, it's a really good application. Thank you very much to everybody who's participated um, in, the, in the live stream. All your comments, been lots and lots of comments. And that's yes. really, really nice to see. Yeah. very very engaged with it so thank you very much for yeah. all your comments uh thank you everyone uh we wish you the best of luck uh, stay in touch keep safe and keep learning english we'll see you next time bye, bye, -bye.